Welcome to the Contractor Success Forum. So today we're talking about what to expect from a good construction accountant. And that's such a great topic for the Contractor Success Forum. I think we talk about that a lot. And we do discuss financial strategies for running a more profitable, successful construction business. And we have Stephen Brown with McDaniel Whitley Bonding and Insurance Agency and Wade Carpenter with Carpenter and Company CPAs. And I am Rob Williams with Iron Gate Entrepreneurial Support System. So guys, Stephen, I know we've got our own construction accountant here, but what do we expect from a good construction accountant? This is an awesome Well, first topic. of all, I want to say this was not Wade's idea for yeah, the topic. That's you right. Know, it, it was mine and yours because, I mean, I can't do my job without financial reports. And with a construction accountant, it's not giving good advice, it's giving bad advice. They lose money and then I can't get them bonds. Right. So it's frustrating. But I, I was telling y'all earlier, as a bonding and insurance agent, I'm obsessed with you not going under. And that's one reason that I'm enjoying these podcasts. And I can just tell you that you, you can't frame without a hammer or a nail gun. You need a good hammer. You need good financial reports to run your company. So, so do you need a good carpenter to do your CPA work? Ah, sorry, uh, yeah. there for uh, you need a way good to your shed. Shed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in the last episode, someone called Wade thinking he was a carpenter to frame out a she shed. Build a wall in their she shed. Yeah. I just built a she shed this weekend, so I will not build someone else's she shed. I is promise. This a, Don't is this call a me he for shed one. or a she shed? He said she shed. So that- it was a, a she shed that was done by a he. Yeah. Well, right, I'm, you know, I'm wondering if you could even have a shed that's a we shed. Yeah. Both of you go out there. But I guess the objects just get away from your spouse. So either. either. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> e- right. Either way, what do you expect from a good construction yeah. CPA? One, one thing that just occurred to me on this is as I talk to people, people probably ask other people, what their accountants are doing for them. But I do not talk to very many people when they come to us that have a good CPA or construction account. They usually don't have a construction account and they've got someone that takes the information off of their receipts and their packages and figures out how to put it on that form that goes to the IRS. And that's what their accountant is. And so I think we've got a whole expectation level that people just don't even know that construction accountants even exist. Go That's find. right. And implementing these systems for contractors is a specialty. And then you've got taxes. I'm sorry I mentioned the T word, but you got taxes <laughs> that you need help with too. A great construction accountant is everything. And because we talked about this before and Wade's probably too humble to brag about himself, but a good construction accountant is an art form. It really is. And it's an art form that comes from years and years and years of working with just contractors. It's not like handling a manufacturer or a bakery or even an insurance agency. A good construction oriented accountant understands contractors. Mm-hmm. Wait, yeah. please. Go I, ahead. I, I can't say much because it's going to seem self serving and. Oh, stop it. Stop it. stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Hey, but, look, Wade's one of the best. Wade, I can tell you from having been on this show with you for over a year that you know what you're talking about because Rob and I have learned a lot from you. And I have some of my best contractors good. say, hey, everything I learned about accounting was from so-and-so. Everything. And that's good and bad because when they complain about the cost of a year-end review that I need for bonding or something, I, I just tell them, can you afford to pay for bad advice? You get what you pay for. Yeah. Well, the only thing I can say, number one, on the taxes, you're right. Construction taxation can be very different, and there are some nuances. And what we would report to Stephen on a financial statement on percentage of completion, it may not be the right tax method for you for your tax purposes. And Structuring it properly can mean a big difference between you minimizing your taxes and maximizing your financial bonding capacity. Oh, yeah. 
That could be a big thing. So starting out, what kind of set weight up? Because I know he doesn't want to do this. So the first thing that that you didn't tell me you were doing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the construction accountants do is, I mean, they do file your taxes just like the other ones. And so I know I went through quite a few because I didn't understand the difference because I was hiring a CPA firm, and and their job, in their eyes, was not the same as my eyes. Their job was to prepare the tax return with the numbers that my people gave them. That was their job. So yes, a construction accountant does prepare your tax returns typically. I mean, they don't even have to. I guess we know some people that just do the bookkeeping stuff and they may be good, but that's one job. So now the whole CFO and advice and organizing things, that did not exist for me with most of the people that I worked with. So what are some of these other things that could be offered by the accountant because some things you have in-house and it's expected to be in-house. I had a bookkeeper in one company. I had a full-blown CFO in another one. I had sort of, I guess I'd call an accountant without a CPA type person. I've had different levels. It looked very different in each situation and the roles of the CPA would have been different, but it took me a long time to figure that out. So preparing the taxes and knowing how to do that is the one thing, but what are some of these other things that we can do? I would say the biggest thing is planning. You're in planning should be very different. And most CPAs, I hate to admit, if they do any planning at all around the taxes. And what I like to do is a three-pronged approach. And I've said this before, but maximize your financial statement, minimize your taxes while not screwing up your cash flow in January, February, you know, because you got big tax bill. We do something to minimize the tax bill. It, it wrecks our cash flow first part of the year. But a true construction CPA should be doing more advanced planning for you, especially if you're getting bonds. Yeah. You know, one one big thing on that is I love you're saying cash flow because the CPAs, I wish their job in their head was to maximize cash flow rather than minimize taxes. I think a lot of these people, they just have an obsession And and this is what the contractors are asking for, to pay the least taxes possible. And most people don't think about that that can really wreck your cash flow. You just said wreck your Mm -hmm. cash flow, but I think that is where you were going with that. And the health of your company, absolutely. And the health of your company, yeah. And And, and the the other thing is delaying cash flows because it it took me a decade or two to realize when people said, I'm saving you all this money this year. A lot of times that meant, well, we're just going to make you pay it next year instead of this year. I want to pay my taxes with the money that I made, not put it off on next year's jobs to pay this year's. Your ROI might be a little bit better, but if you have a bad next year, the consistent profitability, the consistent cash flow is big. Contractors, the, the cash flow I don't know if there are any industries more volatile than these contractors of cash going up and down. I don't know if it's, I think it's the way the business is. It might be a little bit of the personality as well, but you're handling so much cash that's really, we'll say it's other people's cash because you've got the cash, but it's really owed to the lumberyard already or the subcontractor or something like that. So you're being put in control of these big amounts of cash and none of my CPAs helped me with that. That's what my CFOs did, and there are CPAs like Wade that can play both roles. Well, cash flow for a contractor too is very different, and especially if you got long term contracts. But I guess I probably should say at this point, I'm planning a little bit of revenge on Stephen because we're going to do another <laughs> episode about a great bond agent. But look me up, give me a ring. No, I'm kidding. All right. <laughs> but one of the biggest things I would say about planning some of the best, most successful contractors I've ever had and most successful arrangements were when I was working with the bond agent before the end of the year and the bond agent said, I need this much in cash. I want working capital to look like this. And we couldn't always accomplish everything, but we could work towards it and try to dress it up instead of saying, let's spend everything we can so we minimize the taxes. So having a good bond agent to tell you ahead of time, and a lot of CPAs feel like that's stepping over a line. We've got to draw a line between we're going to give you a true picture, but if we're going to help you, there are some planning things we can do and they don't want to get into that side of it. 
Yeah. They're, they're afraid to get into that side of it. They're afraid to talk to the bond agent. Yeah, yeah, because it's not lying. You are really creating the cash, and you're not like enroning something, you know, reporting something. You're helping that person create that cash to have it. It's not like he's making something up on the things after the fact. You're helping this happen. We know how much bonding that you think you need or you're telling us you need, and we're pushing, hopefully, the edge of the envelope on keeping you bonded up to your capacity. So we got to have the numbers to support that. Yeah. And, and you know, the I, most frustrating thing is we always say, please meet with your CPA before the year yeah. end to do you some know, planning. Contractors have this, we have this impression that you just do your work and everything is just going to come out the same way. Doesn't matter. Just, we're going to do these jobs. We charge this price. But there are cash drivers, cash things that you can control that are different. I don't think a lot of beginner contractors understand that. How much money are you going to take out? How much should you leave in? How much do you need to leave in? What kind of terms are you doing? All these things control your cash. You are in control of the company. Builders, a lot of, when you start off, you think, I'm going to build it. I'm going to charge for it. And everything else just works it out. And I've actually heard so many people say that. It's all just going to work out. There's so many things that you control that you don't know about. And they don't teach us that. Even with an MBA, nobody taught me any of that. It was afterwards. I, and I had an undergraduate degree in real estate finance. You'd think they would teach you some of this stuff. I, <laughs> they, they didn't. There was nothing. None of that. That's just a perfect point. You specialize in things. We always talk about your financial board of directors and your accountant is one of those people that have to be the best. You get the best financial board of directors you can find. That's it, period. And then you take their advice and you learn. You don't have to pay for their advice every time. You learn. And for example, Rob, we talked about percentage of completion accounting methods, all the different methods involved in contracting and the expertise that goes along with it. How many questions did we ask Wade when we were studying for our certified construction financial professional test? A lot, a lot. <laughs> a whole lot. Yeah. And then we were constantly amazed, weren't we? And Wade only told us like that much of what he knows. What we were asking about was so fundamental, it was amazing that he didn't laugh in our faces. Yeah. But I, I mean, yeah, sometimes he didn't understand what our question because he assumed we knew that. He's like, You idiots, how long have you been in this business? <laughs> I know. Well, I think one of the keys to my success is not pretending to be an accountant or a lawyer mm -hmm. or a banker or the other people on your financial board or even a contractor. Actually, I had a compliment to me. I'm not a CPA, but I was working with their cash flows and stuff. And and, and it really occurred to me, I, I had a really short meeting with him and he's paying me and he said, no, you've done your job. I was like, the, the call was five minutes, supposed to be an hour. He said, you've made it so simple. It's just, it's simple. It's there. So can your tax account, your CPA, can he simplify and make this simple for you and not overcomplicate it? I think some people, they may be afraid they don't know everything. So they make sure you don't understand it. They complicate it. They throw out these things that make it complicated. Can your CPA talk to you to where you understand things? Or is it one of those meetings you just go to and you look at the ceiling while he's talking and you say, where do I sign? You know, let me file this thing. Right. Time is money. You want to deal with the best and get the right advice. It's like that mechanic that opened the hood and reached in and turned one screw and yeah. said, that'll be $50. And they said, $50, all you did was turn a screw. And he said, yeah, but I knew what screw to turn. Yeah, I've right, definitely heard right. that. In Wade a knows lot what larger screw dollar amounts, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Wade, somebody comes to you, how do you start working with them? What are your priorities? Well, number one, I think it's a matter of let's talk through the business and sometimes we'll spend a few hours talking to what's going on in the business, looking at where your financials are and whether you've got numbers you can trust. It depends. What are your main concerns? A lot of times it's around cash flow or too often it's taxes when maybe taxes shouldn't be the, the driving force, but sometimes that's the driving force for coming to see me. But I guess going back to the training, it's on the job training. The specialized training that you guys did with CFMA, they do not teach that even in college. 
they have different accounting courses and they have cost accounting courses. But cost accounting in those courses are more driven towards manufacturing and standard costing and stuff like that. I mean, manufacturing is one thing and it's tough to figure out every little thing, but construction's got so many more variables and you got a tougher job than any manufacturer really does. Mm-hmm. And manufacturers, Rob will tell you, they'll analyze this to the nth degree, but this is something that you can't really learn in school and you just have to learn it on the job. And unfortunately, there's a lot of CPAs that hold themselves out to be construction experts. Well, they may be able to file your taxes, but they don't know much more than that. And I guess now I'm sounding self-serving again. So I'll no. Hey, look, if you're listening to this podcast and you're interested and you've made it this far along, I just want to hug and kiss you. That's how important <laughs> it is for you to understand how important it is to get a good construction-oriented CPA. And yes, there are lots of great bond agents all over the country fantastic people. And there's lots of great construction oriented CPAs all over the country. Yeah. We're but, not being self-serving on here. You know, we're out here to help these contractors. Absolutely. And, and if we can't tell them what to expect and what to do, we're not going to help them. So we just got to put it on the line, man. Keep on Have trucking, on baby. <laughs> Wade, thank you. You handle that very professionally and humbly. <laughs> Yes, very humble man. Humble man. We're well, complimenting thank you, but him. So, uh, uh, let's just say payback's coming. So. Yeah. <laughs> I, I All right, still yeah. like you to come frame out my she shed. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. If you need a she shed, man, call Carpenter and Company CPAs for your she shed. No, don't. don't oh, know. no. It's, and, a, it's and, the, and, the uh, we shed I've invented. I'm yes, the we shed. And, and, and the Iron Gates, we don't build Iron Gates, <laughs> said Iron Gates entrepreneurs. And Wade is not a carpenter. He's a construction-oriented right. CPA. Lots of irony on this show, so... Crazy stuff. All right, before Keep everyone listening. tunes out now, so we will <laughs> declare this this another great, wonderful episode of the Contractor Success Forum. We are Wade Carpenter, Carpenter & Company CPAs, Stephen Brown, McDaniel Whitley, Bonding and Insurance Agency, and Rob Williams with Iron Gate Entrepreneurial Support Systems. So... Come back and listen to the next Contractor Success Forum.